this video is brought to you by Jobber, but more on them later. So if I was gonna start a paint business tomorrow, there's two mistakes that I made in the past that I want to avoid. I'm gonna make a quick video to tell you guys what those things are, so hopefully it'll help you out. So number one, when I first started out, I didn't really consider what type of painting business I wanted to be. And that's why it kind of took me a long time to find my groove until I found my groove, you know, and then I kind of started building up and growing. If I could start over, I would take some time to decide, what do I want to do? Do I want to be a production painter? When they're going up, you know, that's a whole different type of painting than being like a custom painter. On top of that, you have industrial painting, commercial painting, um, and there's also like parking lot stripers, you know, that's all different types of painting. So really it helps to decide really what you want to do and you can niche down, you know, they always say it's, it's helpful to niche down, but really, it really is to be specialized in one area. Now, some people can go off and be specialized in all those areas, but if I could go back, I would have picked one area and it probably would have been custom homes and just focus on painting high-end custom homes because that's what I enjoy doing. Now, if you're not sure if you're gonna like painting, then I don't recommend going out and buying a whole bunch of tools, right? The first thing you wanna do is just buy the most basic set of tools that you're gonna need, work for your friends and family, figure out if it's something you're good at, something you wanna get good at, and even if it's gonna be something that you can do, right? Now, the, the main thing that made me think about making this video was the one thing that took me a very long time to do, and hopefully I can save you guys from doing the same thing, is you gotta learn when to say no. I've had customer in the past and I was just thinking about this guy and this is what brought the whole idea of this video up is I had a client years ago who demanded that he wanted a cheap price let's just start there so he wanted a cheap price which right away I should have you know been a red flag said I'm out of here right I don't want to do that I don't work for cheap I don't do cheap work but aside from that in the beginning he wanted a cheap price and I've always thought back then you know hey you know thousand bucks is cheaper than zero bucks or three thousand is cheaper than zero buck you know what I mean some is worth more than none at a certain point in my life I had right so basically he's like I already got all the paint and this is how I want it done and he's going through and he's telling me all the ways that he could do it and we all know as a painter it's like the worst thing to hear is like oh I do usually do it myself I just don't have the time you know so basically you're worthless you know that's kind of what they're trying to tell you at least that's how it feels to me anyways but uh but I wanted to appease the guy. I wanted to make a client. I was still pretty fresh in the game. And so um, I said, yeah, you know, if you want to buy supply of the paint, then all is well. We'll get the job done. We'll make it look good. We'll shave some money off the price. You just pay for the labor. Long story short, we needed a lot more paint. He bought the cheapest damn paint he could find. He's like, oh, it should only take 20 gallons. And I knew right away it wasn't going to take 20 gallons. And I mentioned it to him. I said, oh, it's just probably going to take about 30 gallons of paint, maybe more house was super dry it needed to be sealed prior to even painting i mean the guy said oh no it's 20 i already did the math i used to estimate for a paint company back in the day i already know i'm like okay hey no problem man you paid for my for my labor well so i'll fast track to the end we needed more paint we needed about 15 more gallons of paint like 35 gallons of paint to, to wrap up the project because here's the thing the way i apply the paint is i'm putting two coats on i'm back rolling the stucco right and on the siding i'm back brushing on the siding and then i'm coming back on top and i'm putting a top coat on so th th what sucks is by agreeing to his terms to get him a cheaper price by letting him supply the material and me doing it exactly the way that he said to do it by just spraying it which i can't just spray because it's going to look like crap and then you're in this weird dilemma where it's like well i gotta do it right so you want to do it right and then you tell the guy hey we need more paint since you're supplying the paint now the guy is gonna feel duped. He's feeling like you're trying to get more money out of him and you're gonna ask for more labor. So no one ever ends up happy when they get a cheap job. Cheap people typically, with my experience, are never happy. So anytime somebody says, let me get a less price, use my paint, I always say, no, you know, it's my, or if, and then, uh, on top of that, one thing I did forget to mention was, he said he'll do all the prep work which was horrible. So I had to spend extra time on the prep work, which actually added up the labor and then it got higher than he wanted. So it was just a whole bad situation. And in the end, I wasn't happy. In the end, he wasn't happy. And that was the result of me trying to make him happy by not saying, by saying yes to his demands instead of saying, no, I don't think we're a good fit and moving on to the next job. 
So anyways, that's just a real quick video, guys. I want to run that by you. Just, uh, you know, in the very beginning, try to determine which uh, field you want to get into, whether it's um, industrial painting, painting parking lots, or if you want to do like custom homes. And then uh, just make sure if a customer's shooting you red flags or does is trying to make you come out of your comfort zone, just tell them no. You don't need the job that bad because then, and then another negative thing that happens that gets put into perpetuity is that now you work for this one cheap guy. He's going to tell his other buddy who's cheap. Oh, I want to call Tim because he hooked it up last time. You know, he, you know, I mean, it's just a bad place to be. So learn when to say no. Figure out what type of painter you want to be and you'll be in good shape. So like I said in the beginning, this video is sponsored by Jobber. If you need help writing out your estimates, I use this to write out all my estimates and I have a really good close rate. Everybody always compliments the estimates because most of the guys out there are not really writing up super extensive estimates with the pictures and all the data in there. And it also helps you because it builds your database up and you can always retarget them later. Like for me, I do solar panel cleaning, so I'm able to retarget them. So works on desktop, works on mobile. Check out my link in the top description. I'll get a special offer and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.